So how did we get started with music and how did we develop our sound? Well, we got started with music mostly because of COVID. We did TV previously, and during COVID, basically Todd got bored, dug up some old songs that he used to do, and started rewriting them. Calls me up one day and says, hey, do you want to make a band? And uh, we did. here we are. <laughs> um, the name Blonde Viper comes from our TV show. We used to have a, a nationally syndicated show called Nature Adventures, where her and I would go around and film and you know, see animals and pick them up and all that. Reptiles were our specialty. We were very well known for our reptile shows that we did. Uh, we traveled around and did um, hundreds of live shows with reptiles, educating people about them and kind of doing this exciting little, uh, you know, thing. Thing, yeah. But anyway, blonde and then viper because I was, you know, going out in the field and picking up rattlesnakes and things like that. So, um what do you want people to take away from your music? I want people to notice how unique we are and appreciate the fact that we're keeping Hard Rock alive. Yep, oh, that's good. What would you describe your sound to the? How would you describe your sound to the average listener? To the average listener, I'd say it's it's music, it's it's rock music. It's got a beat, it's got a melody. Um, it it goes from heavy metal to acoustic. It's a musical box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get. You might be crying one minute, laughing one minute, and, uh, and then rocking out the next. Bang in your head, yep. Um, what three bands you'd like to tour with? I would, you, give me one, and I'll fill in the other two. What three bands would we want to tour Who would you want to tour with? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so we'll do two. Um, I'd like to tour with the Beatles because, A... If the Beatles toured, we'd have a huge audience. There'd be like millions of people that would go to these shows. Plus two of the Beatles would be ghosts, and I don't want to see that because that'd be cool. And the other band I'd want to tour with is Ourselves because when Def Leppard was doing their shows in Vegas, they were their own opening act. They'd put on these really bad disguises, and they'd be their own opening act, and I thought that was the funniest thing I'd ever heard of, so I wanted to do that too. <laughs> what are your thoughts on AI-generated music? You can take that because I have very strong feelings about that. I am very proud of the fact that we do music the old-fashioned way. We do it. We actually sing. We play the instruments and create it from scratch. We don't have a computer making it up for us. And um, We even cringe at pitch shift or uh, pitch correct. Yeah, we try to keep it yeah. as natural as possible We'd and don't like it when it they right, try to yeah. change us too much when they do the... The, the cuts and yeah. the mixing. <laughs> uh, my thought is AI-generated music. To me, music and any form of art, filmmaking, painting, sculpting, anything like that is an expression of humans. It's a human expression. So if it's not a human doing it, eh, I don't think it counts. So that's my thought. Um, what's your take on the current state of hard rock? Well, the current state of hard rock is not like it used to be. Obviously, back in the 70s and 80s, it was the, the king of music, in my opinion. And uh, it's taken, taken quite a few steps back. But it still definitely exists. I mean, everywhere you go, people love 80s music, and they're always going to love the classic rock and roll. It's just one of those eras that will never die. And I think that our sound is a lot like what you'd hear back in the 80s. Or 70s, because <laughs> I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's the current local music scene in South Dakota? The music scene in South Dakota is kind of a, actually a close-knit community. There's a lot of bands. Uh, most of them play um, just covers, though. There isn't a lot of bands that do original music. Um, but music is definitely a big part of this area. Pretty much every small-town bar or um, restaurant gets live music in there. Yeah, there, so. it, it's surprising. I think I think the local music scene is, is really, really strong, actually. Um, we've got uh, Ron Keel, lives a few miles from us. Um, you know, he sang for Black Sabbath and Keel and all, Steel, all those bands. You know, a big, a big talent. He's got his own label. Um, and we've got a lot of local musicians that have never left the bedroom, but they're amazing. You know, they just are. They just they just need to do it. Um, so, yeah, um, there's there's a long history of music in this area. 
what <laughs> what are the what are your takes on the royalties that streaming services pay out to artists? You can talk about well, that one. <laughs> this this we'll just do a thumbs down. It's it's pathetic. It's it's embarrassing. They should be embarrassed. That's all I'm going to say. Um, what's next for Blonde Viper? So the future of Blonde Viper, I'm hoping we can keep on making music for a long time. Uh, our ultimate goal is to be able to get out there more and play some live shows. And um, we are going to take our acoustic show on the road. It's called Blonde Viper Naked. And we are going to start going around and doing some shows as Blonde Viper Naked. Right, that's our acoustic thing. And uh, we have a new album coming out in 2025. It's, it's been recorded for quite a while. We're waiting for it to get uh, mixed and mastered. And uh, we're going to keep making music videos. There's, we're, you know, with our film background, we do a lot of that. And we're just going to keep plugging away because uh, you sit at the table long enough, eventually you'll eat. So, and the last question, any shout-outs? I would shout-out to Eldon and Rich. Eldon and Rich, yeah. Because their talents are absolutely mind-blowing. And um, they've been a very valuable part of the band. Right, our guitarist and our, our drummer. And uh, we want to shout out to uh, Mike Dresch, who does all our mixing and mastering. And he's, uh, he's a Hall of Fame mixing and mastering guru, so we're very happy about that. And uh, anybody that's helped us along the way, um, especially with uh, all the extra extras we've used in music videos that have put up with that uh, experience, right. we want to shout out to them. So. And all the people who have supported our crazy projects, and there's been a lot of them. Yeah, 